Good morning, guys. I hope your week is getting off to a decent start right now. Today's a travel day for me, and I wasn't even going to make a video, but uh, then a couple of things came up in the news that I really felt was important to talk about, especially in regards to the 100K challenge. What's that? Well, I'll talk about that in a second. But also, I just wanted to reach out and ask for one thing. Please subscribe! And the reason for this is once you get to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, you kind of reach a different plateau. They begin treating you somewhat differently, promote you a bit more. You get one of those nice little silver plaques to put on your studio. Oh, it's so cool. Okay, well, I don't really care about any of that. But um, it, it really does make a big difference to the growth of the channel. And the reason I'm asking about it right now is because... I know you guys are out there. I know. And the reason I know is because of the lovely analytics that YouTube gives me on a regular basis. In the last 28 days, I've had over 160,000 unique viewers. The subscribers are out there. And over the last 90 days, I've had over a half a million unique viewers. What that means is obviously only about 20%, actually less than 20% of my unique viewers have actually subscribed. So if you are subscribed, thank you so very much. You are making a huge difference to this channel and please let everybody else know. Tell your kids, tell your loved ones, tell anybody who might be willing to just hit that subscribe button to do so because who knows, you may spark a new interest in space flight. Regardless, it doesn't cost them anything and it would be an enormous help to my channel. I really, really want to get to 100,000 before I leave the UK. That may sound impossible, but it isn't because I know you guys are out there. And for those of you who haven't subscribed, I guarantee you I'm not selling your information to any advertiser or anything. Yeah, YouTube, they may be doing some of that stuff, but they do it regardless. Even if you're just watching the videos, they still track what you watch. So there's really no escaping the Google. So that being the case, Please subscribe, and I'm going to stop talking about that and move on to Vulcan Centaur and new information about Starliner. And one of the reasons I think that my channel is in such slow growth mode is because of the things I say about ULA and Vulcan Centaur. Also, the stuff about Russia certainly doesn't help, but I have always been controversial, and I don't think that's ever going to change, even if my channel never grows as a result of it. I'm not going to compromise my beliefs. But that being the case, as many of you probably know, but a quick refresher, I am betting that Vulcan Centaur is going to reach orbit and actually deliver Peregrine to the moon before Starship can complete a successful orbital test, and I'm literally betting my on it. And just yesterday, Tori Bruno made an announcement that led me to double down on my claim. I really think that Vulcan Centaur is going to fly on schedule at the beginning of its launch window in February 15th, and that's because the second BE-4 engine is now flight certified, delivered, and being installed on Vulcan Centaur as we speak. But just to be 100% clear, I love SpaceX. There's no company I love more, and that's just because of their long-term vision, their goal of colonizing Mars. That is beyond exciting, and I certainly want them to succeed. But what I don't want is a monopoly. That's never good for any industry, especially spaceflight. And Vulcan Centaur is a legitimate competitor. It really is, from the process of manufacturing that they're going through right now, the unique materials that they're using to keep the weight way, way down, therefore reducing the amount of thrust and fuel that's required to achieve higher orbits and larger payloads, to smart engine recovery, which has evolved from a parafoil recovery process now to an ocean recovery with a unique raft that's already in the process of being tested. They're probably going to start using smart recovery 
in 2024. That's going to take the price way down as well. And another thing I really like about Vulcan is the fact that they've already finished an advanced upper stage. That is to say, an upper stage that, cap that is capable of relighting even hours after the initial launch. And that's something that's going to be incredibly important to their first mission. Because as I mentioned in my previous video about this subject, they're going to be deploying Kuiper satellites as well as Peregrine. And this is going to be quite a challenge for Centaur 5 because first it has to drop off the two Kuiper satellites in the appropriate orbit, low Earth orbit that is, and then deliver Peregrine all the way to the moon afterwards. That's something that rockets are seldom called upon to do. And to be specific in terms of how they're going to do this, well, they're going to mount the two Kuiper satellites on either side of the payload adapter while Peregrine is mounted in the main fairing. The reason they're doing this is because if you put them where the small spacecraft are supposed to go, those can't be deployed before the primary spacecraft. So you have to put them outside the normal fairing configuration. This is something that ULA does a lot. A lot of customization of the Centaur upper stage. They've done it not only for this customer, they do it also for people like Starliner, adding that additional aerodynamic skirt in order to give it the stability it needs in order to reach orbit. Not that it's ever going to be safe, but we'll get to Starliner here in a little bit. So once those Kuiper satellites are dropped off, then Centaur 5 will relight and push Peregrine out to an appropriate trajectory to take it to the moon, and then Peregrine will have to take over from there. But this is going to be the first demonstration of Centaur's unique capabilities, and it's going to be done on the very first flight of this rocket, and that's why I believe it's a very mature rocket that's ready to go, because all of its components have been tested to failure to a great, great degree of obsession actually, and that's something that Tori Bruno would insist on. I really do like the guy. I think you guys can probably guess. I've interacted with him a bit on Twitter, but I also know people. I'm actually friends with people who work for him, and they will confirm that he is a very decent person, easy to get along with, and certainly an expert in his field, although he's not the eccentric genius that Elon Musk is. Elon Musk is a great deal like Howard Hughes, in my opinion. A guy that has many talents, many interests, and is successful in so many different things that he applies himself to, but at the same time has a degree of eccentricity and, frankly, mental instability that I hope doesn't prove to be his undoing in the long run, but Starship may prove to be his spruce goose in the long run. I certainly hope not, because I want us to colonize Mars every bit as much as Elon does, and Elon is the only one with a really solid plan to do that. That having been said, though, Starship is just a mammoth project. I respect how big of a project this is, and that's why I believe a ship with 33 engines is not going to be ready to take off on the same schedule as a ship with two that are now flight certified along with a bunch of solid rocket boosters that have also been tested to failure. This is a very solid rocket and I have a great deal of confidence in it. As I've said, if I'm wrong, I'm going to tattoo SpaceX fanboy on my butt. Please subscribe! But in my opinion, Vulcan would actually be ready before February 15th if it wasn't for the complication of these Kuiper satellites. But what about Starliner? Well, though this news seemed to be shocking at first, it actually teaches us a lesson in terms of how we shouldn't have knee-jerk reactions to everything we hear about companies we don't like. And I, frankly, was also guilty of that. Recently, NASA's Kathy Loiters said that Boeing could have chosen to not do a second uncrewed flight of Starliner. She claimed that the decision was taken by the company's top level of management. 
it. Now, this seems to be unbelievably irresponsible because, as we all know, Starliner's first uncrewed test was full of problems. They nearly lost the spacecraft twice. NASA implemented 80 different corrective actions, most of them software-related, in order to make the spacecraft safe. It would seem utterly mad to give Boeing the option of not taking a second uncrewed flight, but that's not the whole story. If NASA had demanded that Boeing do this, that means Boeing could have charged NASA for the flight. It would have made a lot of difference to Boeing and would have been very beneficial to them, actually, if NASA had given them that directive because they wouldn't be so far in the red right now. But instead, what happened is Boeing volunteered to do this on their own, therefore it was not billable time. In some ways, it made the project guaranteed to never make a profit, but by making a second uncrewed flight without a NASA directive, Boeing saved the American taxpayers tens of millions, perhaps hundreds of millions of dollars, and that was actually a very honorable thing for them to do. Yeah, I actually said it, Boeing made an honorable decision. So we just need to be very cautious about how quickly we react to news if we don't really understand how the process works. And that applies to me too, because I was mad about this situation at first until one of my supporters, who's very familiar with government contracts, explained to me the whole story. And it turned out to be the opposite of what I thought in terms of Boeing's level of responsibility and frankly, decent business practices, something that they haven't been famous for lately. And in the long run, run, Boeing will never make a profit on Starliner, largely because of this decision, and that's something we should keep in mind. That doesn't mean Starliner's any better than I've said that it was in the past. I still think that it should be canceled and replaced with Dream Chaser, but that's something for the future. So in the meantime, there's your latest updates. Once again, let's get us to 100,000 subscribers, guys. I know we can definitely do it. So please like, please subscribe, check the description for various ways to support this content. And as always, stay angry about space.